Hey everyone, my name is Don. I'm a general surgery resident and welcome to my tutorial on suturing. Uh, so this tutorial is geared towards learning the basics. So if you have no idea how to suture and you need to learn for your surgery rotation in medical school, this is a good place to start. Suturing is one of the fundamental skills that you're going to be expected to learn during your surgery rotation and it's going to be useful regardless of what you do later on. If you're going into family medicine or if you're doing an emergency rotation at all in residency, you're going to probably have to suture some uh, small cuts in the emergency room. So it's really useful to know how to handle needles and just do the basics. So today we're going to be going over how to go from zero to learning how to suture basically. So this tutorial is going to be a little bit different. Um, I think that I've gathered a lot of tips and tricks in the past few years that have helped me improve my suturing and that I wish I had known before. And there's gonna be a lot of exercise to improve your suturing technique and comfort. And we're gonna be doing that by really breaking down the whole sequence of suturing into small uh, segments that can be practiced individually and improved so that you're able to uh, improve and do the whole thing once you're in the operating room, which can be a lot more stressful. The cuts are different, everything's a bit slippery, you're wearing gloves. And so I think the importance of perfecting your technique at home is uh, is super important because uh, things are always a little bit different. Everyone's watching you in the operating room and so uh, you wanna be able to perform under pressure and the only way you do that is if it's perfect at home. So to start off, here's what you're gonna need. Obviously you're gonna want to start with a suture pad which you can find uh, in a kit online on a lot of websites or even on Amazon and they come with the pad, the driver um, and a bunch of uh, needles and sutures for you to practice. And about the needle driver, make sure it really is a needle driver and not a uh, snap. Uh, the snap is not meant to carry a needle. It has this longer jaw and it's kind of serrated in one direction. It's not meant to hold a needle, so you will have a hard time doing it. Some suture clubs kind of, uh, because these are cheaper, they'll hand them out to, to people to, to kind of handle but really recommend getting a needle driver, which you see here has a shorter jaw. And the grip pattern you can see is kind of like a crisscross there. And this is much easier to clamp onto a needle. I won't go into detail about how to not tie because I have separate videos about that and those are separate skills that need to be practiced independently. So when you're first holding a needle driver, it's gonna be really, really tempting to hold it like a pair of scissors at the tip of your fingers with your thumb in one of the rings and one of the other fingers in the other ring. You'll never see a surgeon use a needle driver like this because there's no control and it's actually uh, quite uncomfortable to um, take the bite because you don't have as much uh, range of motion with your fingers. The grip that you should be practicing and the first exercise that you should be practicing at all is just holding the needle driver in your hand, palming it, and just locking and unlocking it. So either you can palm it completely or put your thumb in the ring only and you can really practice locking and unlocking the needle driver. And you'll see that with just a slight amount of pressure on uh, both of the uh, prongs, uh, you'll be able to unlock it quite comfortably. So the first thing I would really practice for anyone who hasn't been suturing at all is just locking and locking in this position. The other thing you should be doing is just holding the needle driver in your hand to feel the weight and get comfortable with holding this new instrument. And the forceps are much easier to handle, but in your left hand, generally, uh, you're gonna wanna just practice holding the forceps and being comfortable gripping with these. Once you're pretty comfortable holding in these instruments and locking and unlocking the driver, you're gonna wanna take your needle. I recommend starting with a uh, bigger needle just so that it's easier. Classically, when positioning the needle on the needle driver, you want it at around 90 degrees, about two thirds of the way down the needle here. You're gonna see that it varies a little bit, but starting at 90 degrees this way, is a great start. So it's gonna be really tempting to hold the needle with your fingers to put it on the needle driver, but it's gonna be really important to try to get used to using your forceps to handle the needle to avoid sticking yourself with the needle. So here's where the next exercise comes in. It's really just gonna be positioning the needle, which means loading the needle um, in position using the forceps. You're gonna see that the forceps are not really designed to hold the needle, but it's really possible if you kind of jam it um, at the end there in the teeth so this position, the needle is loaded, which means that it can be potentially dangerous and hit someone. The other position you want to learn is how to lock your needle or put it into safety position so that it is not dangerous. So if you grab it at the string here, it as well can't really poke anyone, but more commonly you're gonna see people lock it down and put it into this position, which is hiding the tip of the needle. So the next exercise is really just gonna be to practice doing that. Um, because it's something that we kind of forget about, 
but it's something that is also helpful to handle the needle. So just load and unload your needle back and forth in the proper position. And you can also start from the sutra pad, picking up your needle with both instruments and putting it into position correctly. Again, you wanna be fast at loading and unloading the needle and avoid using your fingers. Using these two instruments, you can really become used to making fine tuning adjustments and angles that'll help you take bites later on. So next we're gonna learn how to actually take a bite with the needle driver and the needle. And we're gonna do that without using the forceps at first, just to get the motion down with the needle driver. And the key to this that everyone's gonna to repeat to you all the time is that you want to follow the curve of the needle. You're not pushing through, you're letting the needle guide itself through using the curvature and using the cutting edge of the needle. And you're generally gonna to wanna to enter tissue at 90 degrees and follow the curvature of the needle as much as possible. This is where the palming grip becomes really important. You can see that if I was using the needle driver with my fingers, it'd be a bit tough to reach there because my wrist would be over rotated. But if I palm it like this, it's quite easy to just rotate the instrument just a bit more and going through. So to start off with a bite, I really suggest using just the needle driver and going through and then re-gripping here and taking it out this way. You really don't wanna crush the end of the needle there. You have, just have to practice gripping it a little. So for this part, I really suggest you cut uh, the suture to a really short end so that you don't have a bunch of suture to pull through because we're really just practicing taking the bite with the needle until it's really smooth. So you wanna enter at 90 degrees and rotate with the needle, come out the other end. You see the tip there, you just grab it. Don't crush it, don't lock your needle driver but you don't wanna pull, you wanna rotate like that. And in this position, just pull it out and then using your adsins or your forceps, reposition. Notice here how if I didn't grip the needle far enough and that there's not enough a needle po poking out the other side, I can re-grip a bit down and push through a bit more. Again, following the curvature until there's the end out here. And I wanna grip it here and turn with my wrist. A mistake people will do sometimes is as they're like this, you're gonna grab like this and now you're a bit stuck on this side. So make sure you just turn your wrist back so that you have this natural curve of your wrist. So once that motion is really comfortable to you and that you're really able to uh, do this motion, then you're gonna add the adsins in to help assist uh, the tissue bite and also take the needle out. So when you're passing the needle through the tissue, you're just lifting the tissue with your forceps putting the needle through because you have a bit more tension now and you can grip the other end too. But again, you wanna just follow the curvature of the needle at all times. And using your adsins, uh, you can grip it and practice pulling it through, which may be a bit harder to follow the curvature of the needle, but you still want to try to do that as much as possible. And in this position, you're ready to load the needle again to take another bite if needed, or you're able to put it into safety mode like that, you're ready to tie with a one-handed tie. So this is something you can practice without not tying at all. Just practicing pulling the needle through using a combination of the forceps and the needle driver and different grips depending on the situation. And notice the grip as always, that it's kind of a loose grip on the needle driver, the thumbs coming in and out of the ring. So when you're gonna take your first bite, your suture is gonna be really long, you're gonna have to pull it through the temptation is that you're gonna to wanna to pull it towards your face or pull it up like this. But again, your face is not sterile and you don't wanna poke someone by doing that. One easy way to avoid that is just to use your forceps or your hand on this side to uh, pull the string in kind of this pulley way uh, in a side to side fashion so that the suture goes through without you uh, poking someone in their eye. So that's just a kind of a quick tip on how to pull through. And then you're ready to not tie using a one-handed, two-handed or instrument tie which you can refer to one of my other videos to see how to do that exactly. So it's really tempting to put it all together and do a bunch of knots uh, when you're practicing, but I think it's really important to practice all of these skills independently uh, because running through all of it doesn't let you practice enough the uh, same moves repetitively so that they become really uh, muscle memory. Hopefully this was helpful. This was my tutorial on the basics of suturing for someone who doesn't know how to suture at all. But I really think that even if you know how to suture, you can really improve by using these drills. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up or a comment in the comment section below. And I might make a future video on more advanced suturing skills and different kinds of knots and sutures uh, that we use and what context they're used in. So uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.